بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today we continue our topic and we are now speaking about the descriptions of Jannah and Jahannam May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah and we seek refuge in him from hellfire Jannah is paradise. Jahannam is hellfire. Jannah has many names. Jahannam has many names. Jannah has many blessings and nothing but the blessings. It has everything that you wish for and more of the things that you can't even ever have imagined. And everything that's in there, even the things that were forbidden in this life, in Jannah, many of them will be permissible but the harm of it is taken away. And in Jahannam, everything that harms in this world is there by multiples. And everything that is harmful in physical and, and in speech and in every way is in Jahannam. There is no blessing, there is no comfort in there. The total opposite. We're talking about two opposite worlds. Jannah and Jahannam. Opposite in every meaning of the word. You name it. Anything you come to ask about what is in heaven and what is in hell, what is in Jannah, what is in Jahannam, they are opposites. Yet their names can be the same. Names can be the same, but their descriptions are different. Their effect is different. What's different? It's opposite. One is mercy and happiness and joy and pleasure and nothing but that. And one is misery, torment, pain, and sadness and nothing but that. For example, you may talk about clothing. In Jannah there is clothing and in Jahannam there is clothing. But the clothing of Jannah is the opposite of the clothing in Jahannam. The clothing of Jannah is bliss and beauty and the clothing in Jahannam is pain and ugly. The clothing in Jannah is beautiful and makes you feel pleasurable the clothing in Jahannam is 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 atrocious and it makes you feel the heat even more it's made out of iron it's made out of steel it's made out of some of them are made out of all the materials that conduct heat and the materials that also conduct cold so in Jahannam, there is cold and there is heat. And in Jannah, there is neither cold nor heat. It's in between. In Jahannam, the cold is the burning cold. And the heat is the burning heat. Have you ever heard of cold that burns you? Yes. Cold can burn you. If in this world, cold can burn you. Extreme coldness. You need special machinery to bring that coldness to that level of burning. Ever heard of frostbites? That's burning. It's burning your skin. So it's the effect of, of fire, but it's cold. And fire has the same effect, but it's heat. How can one, how can one find anything that is similar between Jannah and Jahannam? And how can one find anything that is similar between the believers who, are, who enter it and the miserable ones who enter Jahannam? How can they be equal? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a differentiation of Ashab al-Jannah, the people of Jannah wa Ashab al-Nar and the people of Hellfire. They are never equal. Hal yastawiyani mathala? Are they equal to each other in any example that you can think of? There is no example that can be brought to give a similarity between the people of heaven and the people of hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Jannah in the Quran in the most beautiful language. And he says, for example, A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, encouraging us, Wasari'u, hurry up. Hasten. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ 
أعدت للمتقين. And race, hasten, hurry up, in your deeds and in your actions and in your belief, to a paradise its size is equal to the width of the heaven, of the skies and the earth. The skies, all the skies which Allah created, all the universes which Allah created, and the earth. Allah gives the earth because we can see the earth. We can't see the whole universe. We can't comprehend the universe. So Allah says, all the universes, all the skies, and then He mentions the earth. Why? The earth is like a speck inside of a speck, inside of a speck compared to the universe. Yet we still see this speck, how huge. If a speck inside of a speck inside of a speck is this earth, and look how huge we see it. How can one imagine the universes? There's the universe of this world, and there are skies which Allah has created above that. Seven other universes. Our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam describes, and we mentioned this hadith earlier, previously in other talks, that the worldly sky compared to the second sky is like a ring in the desert. And the second sky to the third sky is like a ring compared to a desert. And so on. Third to the fourth, fourth to the fifth, same comparison. Fifth to the sixth, sixth to the seventh. And above the seventh is Al Firdaus. Above that, Arshullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's throne. We cannot describe it. And Allah says, the Arsh of Allah, the throne of Allah encompasses them all. Jannah is beneath that. Jannah is the width of all these skies. And the Arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, its throne is the ceiling of Jannah. From it emanates the light. Because in Jannah there's no day and night. There's no sun that sets and rises and sets. There is a light. But we're going to talk about Jannah in the later lectures to come. What we want to talk about now to begin with is Jahannam. Because if you look through the verses in the Quran, you'll find that whenever Allah describes heaven and hell, often He begins with Jahannam and then ends with Jannah. Ends with the mercy, ends with the love, ends with the pleasure. Fear, then hope. Fear, then hope. And this is the life we live, brothers and sisters. A mu'min lives a life between fear and hope. What is fear and what is hope? How is this interpreted in life? Well, fear is like this. When you see an opportunity to commit a haram act, you remember Allah's punishment. You get afraid of it. And so you fear the act. No matter how tempting it may be, the more you know about Allah's punishment. How is hope? When you see an opportunity in your life that will bring you closer to Allah and earn you places in Jannah, rewards, then you have hope. You say, there is my opportunity. You race to it. When you hear about Allah's punishment, you get afraid. When you hear about Allah's forgiveness, you race to ask Him to forgive you. And these desires and temptations that are in us, Wallahi, Allah did not put them in there Except for one reason, to test us. But what kind of a test? A test within His mercy. What is this mercy? If it wasn't for the desires and temptations and lust that we have, that call us to do haram, we will not know how to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you feel the distance, you long for your beloved, don't you? If you love someone a lot and you're distanced away from them, or you do something wrong to them, you realize how much that love is worth. Isn't that right? So the negative brings the positive to us. Adam alayhi salam, when Allah created him, He created him and placed him in Jannah. Him and Hawa, our father and mother. He ate from the tree. It was forbidden. Allah gave him mercy and forgave him when he returned back to Allah. If Adam alayhi salam did not eat from the tree, some say, maybe he would have not learned the true meaning of forgiveness. Maybe. He knew forgiveness, but not in this way. Until he committed an act, and this drew him even closer than before to Allah. Yes, he was pure, 
But these feelings come when you experience a furtherness. So these lusts and temptations only make us long for Allah's mercy and forgiveness in Jannah. Oh, look what we have missed out on. I had Jannah and now I missed out on it. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that every person has a place in Jannah and every person has a place in hellfire. Muslim or non-Muslim. You have a place in Jannah and you have a place in Jahannam. Whichever one you keep, that's the place that you have earned. And if you leave it out, for example, if, I, if you had a place in Jannah and you lost that place, it is given extra to those who enter it. So for example, there's two people. One of them has lost his place in Jannah, the other one enters Jannah. The first one goes to Jahannam and takes the sp and whatever he has earned of punishment in Jahannam, the space that was given to the other person is shared with him now. And the space that was supposed to be his in Jannah is now shared with the one who entered it. Because there isn't a place in Jannah that will be left empty. And there isn't a place in Jahannam that will be left empty. All will be given to the ones that deserve it. And Allah knows in what balance it should be. in, And Allah knows best. In relation to Jahannam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in a terrible way. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا سَقَرُ وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا سَقَرُ He's talking to the Prophet ﷺ. What could possibly explain to you what saqar is? What could possibly explain to you what the blazing hellfire is? Another name for hellfire, saqar. لَا تُبْقِي وَلَا تَذَرُ it does not leave anything unburnt. It does not leave anything unburnt. It barbecues the skin. Al Bashar also means skin. Also means humans, but also means skin. The word lawaha, such a description Allah uses. Lawaha, side to side, turning meat over on a barbecue. From side to side, making sure all sides are cooked. Lawahatun lil bashar. It barbecues the skin. It burns the skin. It blackens the skin. Barbecues the skin, over and over. It is not just a fire that's blazing in some way or another. It has nineteen different guardians of angels that guard it. They're the ones who make sure. They're the, like the directors, the managers of each level, of each position, of each torment, of the people making sure that they are tortured well. Making sure each one has taken their position. They're the managers, 19 of them. And Allah describes them in the Quran. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O you who believe, save yourselves and your family from the fire. It's fuel. It's fuel. It's not petrol. It's not wood. No, no, no. It's not gas. It is people and rocks. Managing hellfire on top of hellfire making sure it's ignited, making sure that it's blazing, are angels. They are tough and harsh. They, they have no, they're merciless. There's no mercy. These angels don't know any mercy. They don't know any forgiveness. You scream, they don't hear you. They don't, they, they don't hear the compassion. They don't hear the, the pain. Abadan. They see the torment means nothing to them. It's like a deaf, dumb, and blind person with a hammer at your head and he's crushing. Doesn't know what he's crushing. Can't hear you screaming. Can't see the, the, the pain, the, 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 can't see the damage they're causing. Can't reply back to you to give you any remorse or anything like that. It's like that. But these angels, they see, hear, and everything. But they have no mercy, no feelings. Just the feeling of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa They must do their work. <laughs> They do not disobey Allah in anything He commands them. And they do everything that Allah tells them. Everything. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you can understand the Arabic language here, this is a heavy, heavy language being used here. It's a threat. Yes, the Quran has words of threat, just as it has words of absolute mercy and absolute relief. It has also the opposite. This is from the mercy of Allah that is telling us. Because the human doesn't listen, you see. If we let ourselves go, we don't listen. So Allah has to put a threat in. And when we adhere to that, Allah gives us the absolute opposite. Sallallahu alayhi wa This is Jahannam. Compare it to heaven. Allah speaks about Jannah in the Quran. About its people and what they get. In general verses, such as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the people of hellfire. Here are two people, two groups, the believers and the disbelievers. They argue concerning their Lord. Who is their Lord? As for the group that denies Allah, that rejects Allah's commands and message, they will have clothing made out of fire and metal. In other verses, it's metal. Out of fire. So it is metal that conducts fire. The hot boiling water will be poured over their heads. Everything that's inside of their in, inside of their bodies, their organs, their intestines, their internal cavities, will melt, will burn. In other in another in another meaning, it will vanish, disintegrate. Wal julud and the skins will melt off. And on their heads they'll be wearing helmets made of steel and metal. Helmets made of steel. Why steel and metal? Helmets. Why the head? Allahu Akbar. Because the biggest sensory receptors are here in the face and the head. Face, the head. Ever been slapped by someone on the face? Compare that to being slapped on the butt or the hand. Big difference. Ever been slapped behind your head? Compare that to someone slapping you on your back. There's pain, but is it the same? Something else accompanies. There's more sensory receptors there. There's more humiliation. Isn't it? Slap a person on the side, get slapped in the ear. Big difference. Punched in the face, punched in the stomach. You get winded in the stomach. In the face, Allahu Akbar. You can see the effect. You can feel it. So on their heads, Allah concentrates. Water boiling from hellfire's heat on their heads. Helmets made of steel on their heads. Resulting in melting down of the internal cavities. What's the head got to do with the internal cavities? Allah knows the head has an effect on the body. The head has an effect on the rest of the body. The skin, well, when, you, when, 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 the, when the angels pour that water down on them from the top, it seeps down to their skin as well. The whole body, when you go into the shower, the sprinkler, and you let the sprinkler come down on your head, you know that it's going to reach the rest of your body. Difference between getting a bucket and taking a little something out and spilling it on your shoulders. It won't reach your head. But when you spill something from the head, you make sure that it's going to cover the whole body. Abadan, from the top to the bottom. So such a defined description, defined description of these people. Every time they wanted to escape it, they will be returned back into it. And they will say to them, go back and taste more. Taste. Taste the feeling of burning. And not only is there feeling, there is also humiliating words, sarcastic words, 
said by these angels to them. And here Allah is saying it, approving of it. They come to escape because obviously you, you want to escape. In that world, you will still have the flight fright response. The fright flight response. Everything that you would have in this life when you are afraid and when you are in pain and when you are scared and in terror, it will stay there with you in hellfire. But it's exacerbated. And the feeling is more, why? Because you can't die. There's no relief. So the angels, every time they seem trying to escape, see so the escape, they, the angels, what they do is that they give room sometimes for you to escape. The person escapes, tries to escape, and then they grab back. In one hadith, it says that when the people of hellfire, see, hellfire breathes in and breathes out. When it breathes in, it sucks everyone back inside to their level, to the depth of their level where they're meant to belong. And when it breathes out, what happens to, to the people inside? They also get blown out a little bit. As it's breathing out, they reach almost the surface. They're about to escape because you see how far is depth. It's in depth. Ditches and valleys and mountains inside. It's a world under, underneath. When they reach almost the surface, they, the people on the top think they're going to escape. So Allah gives them hope, hope. But this hope, Wallahi, is only terror. It's a misery. They're sucked back in. What's worse? When you see the light and you're almost about to escape, and then you're taken back, when you're always there. A person who's always in misery in this life, basically give up hope. But when you have hope and then you're sucked back in, Imagine that. So that's also part of the torment. Compare that to the people of heaven. Today, the people of paradise are too busy. Are too busy in their pleasure. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Very busy. In what? In pleasure. They have no time because they're too busy with their pleasure, with their enjoyment, with their entertainment, with their family, with their spouses. Fakihun. They're eating and drinking. They're enjoying the luxury. Whatever their Lord has given them, they take it all. Nothing is denied from them. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes their clothing. Allah says, they will have clothing made of thi fine and thick silk. It's forbidden for the men of this world, permitted for the men in the hereafter in Jannah and for the women. And in there you'll have bracelets and bangles. Imagine that, bangles, bracelets, jewelry for men and women. Of different, of different forms and shapes and decorations. Allah says, يُحَلَّوْنَ They are decorated. You are decorated with different forms, different choices of beauty, of bracelets, bangles, treasury, treasures, jewelry to wear on you. And Allahu Akbar, don't even start by asking me how to describe the light and the glitter and the beauty of these. For there is nothing in Jannah that can be, there is nothing in this world that can be compared to there. Only the name. Only the name and just a little bit of the identification. But over there you look at it and you say to yourself, I know this, but this is very different. This is not like the other one. Gold, silver, look, look, pearls. Jannah, we'll describe it later on, inshallah. But this is just a taste. They say, taste the punishment of hellfire. Taste it. Is there anything in our body that can feel the effect of something more than the taste, the, the taste buds on our tongue? The tongue, they say, has over how many? A thousand taste buds. That's why you can taste all the different sweetnesses and bitterness and sourness and so on and so forth. Allah uses an expression, a strong 
terrifying expression that the angels say to the people of hellfire, وَذُوقُوا عَذَابَ الْحَرِيقِ And taste the punishment or the pain of the burning. الحريق, the burning. We mentioned last week or the week before that the people of heaven have now crossed the Sirat. And the people's deeds who were equal have now been relieved. They go across the Sirat and they are waiting in front of the doors of, of Jannah. Because the first one that will enter Jannah is none other but our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We'll talk about who will enter it in later classes to come. But as they have crossed and they are safe and they are chatting and talking with one another, some of them saying to other believers, we could have been lost. Alhamdulillah, we did not walk with the wrong, with the, with the wrong friends. Alhamdulillah, we changed our friends. Alhamdulillah. And some of them will have still rights upon each other and they will say, brother, forgive me. And the other one will say, I forgive you for Allah has already rewarded me to forgive you. And so on and so forth. You talk bliss and happiness. But in Jahannam, there are still people falling. There are people in there. There are disbelievers and there are Muslims. Yes, there are Muslims from the Usat, the sinners. The sinners who do not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sinners whose bad deeds have overweighed their good deeds. They're in there. Muslims enter Jahannam. Yes, they enter Jahannam. But in accordance with the hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ, which are sahih and many of them, the Muslims who had tawheed in their life, monotheism, and never made any shirk with Allah during their lives, even if they died with major sins, they will be saved from Jahannam one day with the intercession of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for his ummah, the nation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the calling out of the angels to save them. In a Sahih hadith, which is narrated by Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah, and graded as authentic by Imam Shaykh al-Albani rahmatullahi alayhi, that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created heaven and hell, paradise and hellfire, Jannah and Jahannam, and then he created the humans and the jinns, Jannah heard, Jannah heard the calling out of the believers, saying, Oh Allah, grant us Jannah, grant us Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Anyone who calls out for Jannah, asks Allah for Jannah, three times in their day, while they are believers, three times in their day, Jannah will call out and say, Oh Allah, let them enter me. And Jahannam, Rasul ﷺ says, Any person, who believes in Allah and seeks refuge from Jahannam three times in a day minimum, Jahannam hears them and calls out, Oh my Lord, save them from the burning, save them from Jahannam. So both Jannah and Jahannam are obedient to Allah. They're both slaves and servants of Allah, but one burns and the other one gives bliss. It is out of Allah's mercy. In another hadith, When Jahannam was created, Allah placed the guardian, the main guardian, who is named Malik. He's the main guardian of the 19 angels. And in the Hadith of Sahih, when the Prophet ﷺ was lifted to, the, lifted to the heavens and he saw what he saw in the Mi'raj, he passed by, he was brought, two people came to him. And he was Jib two angels. The first one was Jibreel alayhi salam. And he said, I am Jibreel. And this is my brother, Mikael. Alayhi salam. And he said, and the keeper of hellfire is Malik. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi when he ascended to the heavens with them, every time he passed by an angel or a people or prophets in heaven, they would say to him, greet him with the salams. And they would smile. Except for one. Angel, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam greeted him and he replied, but he did not smile. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Jibreel Alayhi Salam, who is this? He said, Thalika Malik. Oh, innahu Malik. That is Malik. Khazin al nar the guardian of hellfire. He has never smiled since the day Jahannam was created. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, I pass by hellfire 
and it is the worst image I've ever seen قط, ever I've never seen an image like this ever the size of Jahannam is humongous and we know a fire in this world when you add more fuel to it it grows does this happen to Jahannam? Allahu alam. but it is huge at the moment we all know of the hadith Sahih hadith Prophet was walking and they heard a rumble and he said, do you know what this rumbling is? They said, Allahu wa Rasuluhu know best. He said, this is a rock, a stone thrown into hellfire 70 years ago. Sab'una kharifan. Until it now reached Qa'ri Jahannam. The bottomless, the absolute bottom part of Jahannam. 70 years. The size of the people in Jahannam are so huge that the tooth of one of them is the size of the mountain of Uhud. So imagine the rest of their body. Imagine the size. Can you imagine the size now of Jahannam? Jahannam, my dear brothers and sisters, has many gates and many levels. And in the Arabic term, when you say darajat, darajat, they mean levels or steps that rise. And it's only used for Jannah. But when you use the word dark, Oh, Adraq, they are the levels that go downwards and they are only used for Jahannam. This is why Allah expresses the, the point in Surah in, in, about the Munafiqun where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna al Munafiqin fi dark al asfal min al nari wa lan tajid lahum nasira. Which means the hypocrites will be in the lowest parts of all the, the levels in Jahannam and you will not find any helpers to them there this informs us that Jahannam has levels that go down and down and down Allah says in the Quran Laha sab'atu abwab. Jahannam has seven gates in each gate it has many sections many many sections sections of different torments and pains and different descriptions of of what happens in there and each people who deserve what they deserve are entered into the place they deserve. So, different corners, different rooms, different places, different lands, different valleys, different creatures, which torture in different ways. And just as Allah describes Jannah, Jannah, paradise, that there are things in there which no eye has ever seen. Rasul Sallallahu says, Fiha, ma la ra'at. What no, in there, there are things which no eye has ever seen. No ear has ever heard. And things which no person has ever even imagined in their heart, قلب, the heart or, or, or the inner self of a person. Allahu Akbar. قلب. So you see, the mind, the brain is one thing and the qalb is another. You can imagine in your mind, you can picture things, you can you know, use your imagination. But the qalb, it's a feeling. The imagination, is the feeling has never occurred to anyone. Just like it's that in Jannah, it's the same in Jahannam. What no ear has heard, what no eye has ever seen, and no heart has ever felt in Jahannam. Cannot. Animate. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has colors of beauty, has colors of torments. Two opposites. And this Quran is also called Al-Furqan. Al-Furqan, the what? The divider. Between two things. Two things. Abadan. Righteousness or wrongness. Khalas. Misery or happiness. There's no there's no nothing in between. Allah says for Shaqiyun wa Sa'id, either miserable or happy. There's no two there's nothing in between. So these adraq or these these levels which go downwards, each person is placed in the place which they belong. I'm not sure of the authenticity of the following hadith, but it is a narration you will find that we find in the books of hadith that the lowest the description of the lightest punishment in hellfire is two stones or two sandals that the person of the dweller of hellfire wears or is placed under the soles of his feet and their brain boils forever if that's the lightest punishment in hellfire imagine what what could be the worst then is there a worst 
There's no worst. It keeps going and going. When the people fall into hellfire, if you read in Tafsir ibn Kathir, there are colors and shades of descriptions of how the angels grab them. How they grab them. Some of them, they get a group of angels surrounding them. And they bring with them salasil, chains. Allah describes this in Surah al haqqa Let us have a look at it, insha'Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, or actually let's start first of all with Iqra, Surah Al-Qalam. Kalla lanasfa'an bin nasiyah. ناصية كاذبة خاطئة فليدع نادية سندع الزبانية كلا لا تطعه واسجد واقترب which means in Jahannam we will take them by their forelock a lying sinful forelock so let him call upon anyone who he thinks he can help him we will call upon our zabaniya these are the names of the angels that come into hellfire to torture. They're called, their names are Zabaniya. That's their description. They're called the Zabaniya. When you say Zabaniya in hellfire, you know, they know who you're talking about. It's fear. It's terror. They are the torturing angels. By no means. Why? Why don't you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually uh, talks to the Prophet who says, Kalla. By no means. Obey your Lord. He's telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Obey your Lord and prostrate to him and come closer to him to be saved from this. So the angels grab them. In the Tafsir ibn Kathir, there are many descriptions as I said. Some hadiths say that angels will come with brass claws. Brass claws. Why are brass? You're using metal again. You see, if you look at into the hadiths and the ayat of descriptions of the, of the torments in hellfire, you will hear a lot of metal. So here now we're hearing, we've already heard about metal helmets. Now we're hearing about brass claws in angels. What are these brass claws going to be used for? We're going to grab them by their forelock. So these claws will dig into the forelocks, the frontal lobe of the heads of the people of Jahannam. They dig into them. Now imagine, remember now what we said. Hadith Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. kafiri fi jahannam ka jabali uhud. The back tooth of the, of the, of the disbeliever inside of hellfire is like the size of the mountain of Uhud. So now these brass claws are huge and they're digging into the skulls, the frontal skulls, skulls of the disbelievers in hellfire or the dwellers of hellfire. Now siyatin kadibatin khatiya, lying sinful forelocks. Some ulama, modern ulama say, this frontal forelock includes the frontal lobe of the brain which is responsible for, for decision making knowing what's right and wrong making decision do you want to do haram or not so they grab them by that lying it's a lying brain a sinful brain one that decided sins one that decided to lie Allah says in another part of the Quran ulqu fiha ulqu fi idha ulqu fiha this is that description إذا ألقوا فيها سمعوا لها إذا ألقوا فيها سمعوا لها تغيضا وزفيرا when they are ألقوا that is that when they are dropped trashed thrown the word ألقوا you understand the Arabic language, it's, 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 it's a word of degradation, it's a word of, of, of absolute, you call an insignificant person, someone who is a leech, someone who is worth trash. We use it when you, when you, when you drop trash. Let go of the trash, trash or, or, or drop the trash, throw the trash out. So it's an, this, is, this, is, this is the understanding, this is the feeling you get, the perception. When you read those verses, إِذَا أُلْقُوا فِيهَا when they, are throwing, when they are thrown in there like trash. They're nothing. زِبَالَ إِذَا أُلْقُوا فِيهَا When they are thrown in there like, like, like trash. سَمِعُوا لَهَا تَغَيُّضًا وَزَفِيرًا As they are thrown inside, they come nearer and nearer to the voices of Jahannam. The sounds of Jahannam screaming out, yelling out. It has voices. تَغَيُّضًا 
وزفيرا inhalations and exhalations of breathing with sounds of terror sounds of, of making you terrified roars and it's for that person burning they hear, they hear the burning the zafir the, the inhalations and exhalations they hear the burning as well they hear the, imagine that they hear the burning of people crackling Burning, melting, screaming. That's Allah al Al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Yu'ta bi jahannam, wa laha sab'una alfu zimam, or alfa zimam. This hadith you find it in Muslim and Bukhari, and similar wordings. Yu'ta bi jahannam. Jahannam is brought and it will have 70,000, if you like, something like ropes or chains or, 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 um, uh, some kind of lever or, or some kind of uh, connection, something that connects to hellfire. At every rope, there are 70,000 angels. What are they doing to it? Rasul said, Tuqad. Tuqad with 70,000 Zimam. It is steered, it is steered and directed. By 70,000, you know, levers. And on every lever, there are 70,000 angels. 4 billion, 900 million angels. Why are they there? To steer Jahannam. What's Jahannam? It's like a wild animal. It wants to eat everything. So these angels keep it directed. So it doesn't just eat everything. But only to focus on the disbelievers. So then it calls out, where are the disbelievers? Where are they? I'm hungry. I'm starving. That's what it's saying. <sighs> like a wild lion, so hungry. You can barely tame it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Jahannam as untamed. Jahannam is untamed, like a wild beast. It has tongues coming out. You can see the tongues growing out, claws, everything coming out. Snakes and scorpions, heads coming out of it. It's a world, actually, of mountains, valleys, homes, metal, clouds, shades, darkness, and a little bit of light. What kind of light are we talking about? We'll describe that in a minute. It has water. It has food. It has drinks, trees, rivers. Everything that you think of a world, this Jahannam has. Jah Jannah, paradise, also is a world. It has mountains, it has valleys, it has rivers, it has, it has, it has. Same, same names. But there is absolutely no similarity between what is in Jannah and the same names that exist in Jahannam. So the valleys are full of fire. The mountains are fire. The food is that which burns the insides. The water is that which melts the insides. The trees carry fruits that when they eat them, they choke. They choke and they can't die. The rain is like acid. The clothing is made of metal fiber, metal strings. They burn. Allahu Akbar. The utensils that they drink with, in an ayah in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that when they ask for water from Malik, they are given, Allah says, وَسُقُوا مَاءً حَمِيمًا فَقَطَّعَ أَمْعَاءَهُمْ They are given to drink. So this is another form of hope. They're given hope of drinking. But when they come to drink it, it's actually not water. It looks like water. It has the hope of quenching thirst when you look at it. But when they bring it close to their faces, the skin of the face melts off. When they drink it, the insides of their bodies are torn to pieces. So what is there to hope for in Jahannam? There is no hope. And everyone blames everyone in Jahannam. It's your fault, it's your fault, it's your... They cry. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa tells us, they cry until they cry, their, their tears cut out. And the tears turn into blood. They start crying blood. 
وَيَدْعُونَ ثُبُورًا You heard that verse in the Quran where they call out. Thubur is a term used when somebody pleads. Pleads with crying and weeping and pleads with the, all these words. Pleading. Imagine somebody has you tied up on the ground. You can imagine the worst type of torture. And they've got knives in their hands, fire in their hands, acid in their acid, oil, heated oil. And they come to torture you with this, and you have absolutely no power. What do you do? You scream, you wail, you plea with everything you've got. Allah says, وَيَدْعُونَ ثُبُورًا قُلُ ادْعُوا ثُبُورًا كَثِيرًا Allah will, reply, will say to the angels, say, call out, plead as much as you want. ادْعُوا ثُبُورًا كَثِيرًا More, more, more. Keep going, like that. Keep going. The angels, imagine it. The angels are telling you, calling out, and they say to them, call out more, call out more. Yes, plead like that more. Cry more. That's the way. Like that. Torture. Call out more. Increase. قُلْ ادْعُوا ثُبُورًا كَثِيرًا Plea as much as you want. Some people who enter Jahannam who have not paid their zakat. And among them will be people among the Muslims who have neglected their zakat to the poor. We know what the zakat is, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transforms this zakat into the form of iron metals by which their body sides all sides and the top and the bottom are ironed with them like an iron like the way you iron clothes this is in the quran that their zakat those who do not produce their zakat they will be placed in hellfire and they will be ironed with their kunuz with their treasures bima kanaztum this taste this with what the treasures that you kept and not gave out the rights to those who had the rights to them the zakat for those of them who didn't pay their zakat as well they'll be awaiting on the sirat the trying to cross remember what we spoke last time the trying to cross we already passed the issue of the sirat tongues will come out of jahannam and snakes with faces so terrifying Allah says in the Quran tell those who did not pay their zakat Sayutawakun, Sayutawakun. They will be in come. They will be wrapped. In the Tafsir bin Kathir, he says they will be wrapped with the tongues and the, and the snakes that come out of Jahannam. They wrap them, and the head of the snake faces the person's face, and he says to him, "Ana kanzuk aladhi kanast. I am your treasure which you kept, saved and not given out to the poor. I am it. This is this is me." They wrap that person. And they just throw them off the sirat. And in they go. Yulqawm. They are thrown into Jahannam. Allah says in Surah Al-Haqqah, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ The one who receives their book in their left. The one who fails. فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَهِ He will say, oh, I wish I never asked for my records to be received. وَلَمْ أَدْرِ مَا حِسَابِيَهِ I never knew what my judgment was going to be. يَا لَيْتَهَا كَانَتِ الْقَاضِيَهِ Oh, I wish that it was the end for me. I wish that I can die. I wish that I can vanish. I wish that I can be destroyed, gone, non-existent. يَا لَيْتَهَا كَانَتِ الْقَاضِيَهِ مَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَهِ All that wealth that I had, it did me nothing today. هَلَكَ عَنِّي سُلْطَانِيَهِ If you recite this verse with the ahkam and you don't want to stop between these two ayat, this is how you would recite it. مَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَهِ هَلَكَ عَنِّي سُلْطَانِيَهِ There's a small silence without taking a breath. مَا أَغْنَ عَنِّي مَالِيَهِ As if you're thinking about something. A pause. هَلَكَ عَنِّي سُلْطَانِيَهِ You know why? In this world, power and wealth are the strength that saves us, doesn't it? On the day of judgment, that person who enters hellfire, as hellfire takes him in, he remembers. مَا أَغْنَ عَنِّي مَالِيَهِ My wealth didn't 
prevent me, didn't save me. He pauses. Is there something wrong here? Why can't my wealth save me? And then he remembers. The power that I had. This, Allah talks about some people who had kingdom, power. All my power also couldn't even save me today. It, it has no power. They're in shock. And then Allah calls out. A voice says, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders. So now the order comes and the angels call out to the people who take, to the angels who take them. Take him, take him, take him. Dig him, dig him deep. You know when you grab someone's head, right? And you hate them so much and you dig it into water to drown them? This is the expression. And the expression, this is an Arabic term when you say as if, so, again, remember as we said, they are thrown like trash. Here is another expression. Take him away from my face, in, that, in other words. That's the expression we use. Take him away from me, I don't look at him. Take this trash away from here. He's pleading and crying and he says, take him away, take him, I don't want to hear him anymore. Like that. And then dig him deep. Now here is another name being used for Jahannam. Then, after you've taken him, the expression thumma means later on. So now he's going through punishment and torment. And soon afterwards, there's going to be another torment. Thumma al-jahim. Jahim is another word of Jahannam. A terrifying blaze. Fasalluh. Meaning, imprison him, lock him up, chain him up. Chain him up, lock him up. He's got a dungeon in there. There's a place in there, he's not going to escape. In the tafsir, it says that the angels will bring chains with rings in these chains. In a hadith, it describes the rings of these chains. It says if one ring were to be dropped on earth, it'll burn everything. One ring. And they'll be wrapped up with this chain or chained up with this chain. And I read in one tafsir in Ibn Kathir that it will be placed in their nostrils or mouth and taken out of their anus. So now you can picture a chicken roasting on a stick. So there will be all these colorful ways of torture. It's 70 cubits long. A dhira is an arm length. 70 arm lengths long. Allahu Akbar, why so big? Why so long? Because of the size of the person in hellfire. Why so big is the person in hellfire? Because he takes slower, slower to burn. Why slower to burn? He feels it longer. And when the skin is burnt, Allah describes in the Quran now, it says when they're burning, Allah describes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullama nadijat juluduhum baddalnahum juludan ghayraha liyadhuqu al-azab liyadhuqu al-azab Allah says every time this skin is burnt and gone, we recreate another layer of skin and taste it again. Allah is now addressing them, saying, and taste the adab, taste the torment. وَذُوقُ عَذَابَ الْحَرِيقِ And taste the torment of the burning. Again, Allah is using the word burning here. What is burning in hellfire? Is it just fire that burns like the flames? Or is it something else? What is fire in Jahannam? Why is Jahannam called different names? Jahannam. Saqar. Jahim. Hawiyah. Uh, Sa'ir, many other names, Jahannam is called. Why all these names? Because fire is not like just the blazing fire that you see before you. It is something different. Fire can be blazing fire, flames. It can be acid. It can be atomic bombs, nuclear reactions or radiation. This is also termed in fire in Arabic. Lava. Volcanic eruptions, lava is fire. So anything that this is disintegrate, that uh, burns, melts, is fire, of all of all sorts in nature. So in Jahannam there is that. 
they will ask for food and the angel will, angels will say to them go down to the bottom of hellfire and there is a tree there are trees there full of fruits so when they reach those trees they find that they have faces that come out of its branches Allah says shayateen, as if they are faces of devils and they are forced they are forced to eat from the tree it's not up to that they were hungry they go there then they are forced to eat from the tree so it is stuffed down their throats it is called shajarat al-zakum Allah says inna shajarat al-zakum ita'amul athim the zakum tree is the will be the food of the person who continuously does sins in their life and doesn't repent when they eat it they choke Allah sent down a verse one time Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was eating and suddenly Allah sent down a verse of the Quran which made him choke sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yani ghas he's eating and he find it hard to swallow because of the fear of that verse Allah says and they will have food that will make them choke and a very painful punishment Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he couldn't swallow that piece of food when that verse came down Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam glanced he had a, an op opportunity to glance into hellfire and who did he see most of it in? And he had a chance to glance into Jannah, and who did he see most of it? He said, I had a glance in, Jahannam, in Jannah, paradise, and I saw that the majority of its people are the Masakin. The Masakin are the poor people. People in this life who used to live, who had a, probably had a job, had some sort of income, but it wasn't enough for their daily lives. And the poor people, and they were patient, and they relied on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I looked at hellfire, and I saw... The majority of it, in one hadith it says, the women, most of the women. And this is not because of Islam is a sexist religion, a'udhu billah. Nor is it a degradation or humiliation of women, nor is it an honor for the men. But it is just a truth and a reality, because there is a reason for that. The women asked him, Ya Rasulullah, why? Why are the women in there the most? He said, because naturally they forget they forget some of the blessings and so they start to curse a lot and deny a lot he used another expression the way their treatment some of them their treatment to their husbands and we're not talking about believing women we're talking about women who don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but those who don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among the women are many but he also spoke about the mutakabbirun those who had pride and he also said and I glanced in and I found that the majority of the reasons why Muslims from my ummah will enter hellfire. One of the main reasons, the reason that majority of the ummah, the, the majority of the, re, the greatest reason that causes Muslims to enter hellfire are muhakkirat al dhunub They are the, the minor sins which they took for granted. They thought it wasn't important. It's just a minor sin. When you look at something very small, what happens to you? It's small, but you take it for granted. What happens in the long run? It accumulates. Because you're not thinking of it as something big. Before you know it, it's so much you didn't even realize. So, muhaqqirat al dhunub the minor sins which Muslims take for granted, some of them, they build up and they cause them to fall into hellfire. So be aware of them, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. We end it here, insha'Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to save us from his torment. Oh Allah, you are the most merciful. You are the compassionate. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We recite in every action that we do. It is the name of Allah, the giver of mercy, the encompasser of mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to the dua of his servant when he asks him, and he is persistent in his asking, and he humiliates himself before Allah or herself, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah loves to hear the munajat, the calling out of his servant when he calls upon him. Ask him, my dear brothers and sisters, request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us Jannah and to save us from hellfire. Jazakumullahu khair, wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.